Good evening. Now, this is going to be a brief talk on uh, Bash and Windows. I have a background on, in the Windows environment, and uh, that's why I uh, thought I'd take a look at it, and maybe other people are interested in it, so I thought I'd give this presentation. So, what will be the agenda for today? Uh, talk about my experience with Windows 10. Although I have 25 years uh, in uh, Windows, I've never installed Windows 10 before. So that was uh, interesting. And then uh, uh, running Bash uh, on it. Uh, and then uh, we're going to have a small discussion at the end uh, what you think of Windows and uh, running Windows in a development environment or in the, in the open source environment or 12 factor applications. Uh, so that's what I, I want to end this discussion. So um, I have a background both in development. Uh, in the past, I had uh, I worked with uh, near sourcing in uh, Belgrade for a couple of years. We had a couple of people working there for us. And it was all at that time when we had a startup. There was only plat one platform you can imagine it was Windows. Nobody would think of anything else but Windows. Or maybe there were some people playing uh, Linux or Unix on, on uh, in large uh, enterprises. But uh, any startup would uh, build anything on Windows. So that has definitely changed. Um, and then, uh, in the meantime, I've also been a trainer and uh, uh, in consulting in, uh, in operations. So last year, I made a switch out of this Windows environment and uh, attended many of the uh, meetups. So here I am. So um, Bash and Windows. Why did Microsoft introduce Bash and Windows? Uh, well, first of all, because you can do Control V in the command prompt. That was my big irritation. Maybe some of you know it. Right click is the only way to put something in the, uh, the command prompt. Well, that was solved in uh, PowerShell. Um, but PowerShell only runs on Windows. So there's no nothing. You, you can you can manage uh, your VMware environment from within Windows. You can you can manage using PowerShell, but not anything else. You can run PowerShell on Linux or on any other POSIX platform. And then, well, as we all know, open source is there and it will stay there. And open source is mostly from the Windows environment. Or, I'm sorry, from Linux, from the Linux environment. So, uh, uh, and that's why Microsoft, they noticed many people are running around with their Mac laptops. Something I noticed very, very clearly when I entered this new environment, nobody, almost nobody, 90% of the people, some there's, you have a Windows laptop. I have a Windows laptop. You have a Windows laptop? Okay. No. <laughs> there's a few people I know, they have a Windows laptop, but most of the people have a Mac laptop. And Microsoft knows this too. So that's why they started this with this project. Um, and well, here's the result. They published it. They uh, they open sourced it, or they, they announced it in uh, Build 2016. That was a couple months ago, two months ago. Okay, that's now something about the architecture. So many people are thinking, okay, Bash on Windows, uh, Linux on Windows. That must be a uh, virtual machine. No, it's not. Uh, those of you who know uh, Windows NT from the from the back in the days, there was a, there was a POSIX subsystem in Windows. That was probably because uh, at that time Microsoft wanted to sell into the uh, US government and that was sort of a compliance reason they needed to have this POSIX, this POSIX uh, subsystem because the government at that time required that. So they have multiple systems. You can support multiple, multiple types of operating systems within the Windows NT or Windows kernel. And they made use with this bash for, for Windows uh, to, uh, to support this. So what they did is they, step over here. So bash, it's just command prompt. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a window, it's a Linux command uh, utility, Linux uh, elf uh, command uh, or, or application. And they, they made a user mode application, which then translates into this kernel mode uh, add-on and this add-on translates the calls from the uh, uh, from the application back into Linux application. 
So here, this is all the code of Ubuntu. Nothing else. You download original Ubuntu code directly from, well, directly from Ubuntu. And they do the syscall translation from the uh, Linux calls into, uh, into the kernel. And then they translate those calls into the Windows kernel. Yeah? Yes. So it's it's still a Windows 32 process here, and this is a um, well Linux process running on top of uh, the Windows the Windows NT kernel. And in the future, they will upgrade from the current version of uh, Ubuntu 14.04 to 16.04. So that's not much. Of, uh, they don't. They don't do anything. They, and that's how they also circumvent the GPL, because you download the the code as you install it. I show a small video. The, so you don't uh, you don't uh, compile or own the code. You just download the code directly from the uh, from Ubuntu or a repository. Which is equivalent to Ubuntu. Ubuntu is on board with this, right? They are not like yeah. No, 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 no. They they sort of started with it, and then they uh, they started with Ubuntu. I think at the beginning of this year. But the, but so but there's the the underneath my technologies were either already in Windows, or they 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 also had some other emulation tooling, which was available, and then they sort of extended on that and make this possible. So again, this is not a VM. So the install process. Download Windows NT. The latest uh, build, uh, I think it was 14.332. Uh, then uh, mount that in uh, VirtualBox, install it, and then you have to uh, enter a key. So you do have to own Windows, in, uh, Windows 10. It's not like you can do this like uh, trial uh, version. Then uh, you have to create an insider account or upgrade your uh, Windows, uh, your Microsoft Live account to an insider account. And then with that two combinations enables you to uh, install this, uh, this bash on Windows. So I'll give a small, I've made a small <coughs> abstract of all the videos. So here you put it in developer mode. The Windows machine, and then you go to the inside level, go to the fast mode. I don't know whether this is necessary, but anyway, it is. Probably get more uh, new new stuff. And then you go to programmer features, just like the old days, and there you will find the subsystem for Windows. Windows subsystem for uh, and then it installs it. And it does that for every user. So then it, start, it restarts. Yes. It's still being Windows. Yeah. <laughs> it's still being Windows, yes. Yeah. But it's a kernel mode thing, so you can imagine you, you would need something. Uh, when when it, it installs it for every user, so the download of the wind, of the uh, Debian and our Ubuntu uh, sources is for every user. Again, and that's another way I think how they circumvent the GPL. I'm not sure. Okay, that's that's on the background and my experience with installing it. Uh, a little demo. So here we are. Let me just exit out this. So this is my standard Windows prompt, and now I just type bash. And the first thing you notice, <laughs> my home drive is mount, or the driver I'm currently at is mount slash c slash users slash bar. So let's uh, see, uh, so if I do cd Tilde. Now my personal working directory is this. 
So here I can do ls minus l. Oh, that's my sublime which failed. Oh. Try it again. Uh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and this is my, the, my root directory. You see the standard root files, including a mount drive. So how do I discover what version I'm running? LSD? Yeah, it's LSD. LSD. Yeah, LSD. Yeah. No, it's minus A it was. So there we go. Just standard Ubuntu. Okay, now I'm going to give a few demonstration things you can do, as I already uh, noticed uh, or I told you, uh, you cannot run a Sublime, which I tried, or failed. Uh, so let's go to. First, I'm going to compile my hello. So VI. There we go. Just standard hello world. Sorry, you can run git. So I've got the uh, git command installed. So I created my RSA keys. It's the fingerprint of my dash uh, 10 on Windows 10, my, my key. So go back to. Uh, so now I can do a git clone. Of this talk, which is not uploaded yet. There were some issues. <coughs> So there's the proof. I can run Git on my Windows. Just standard Git. Nothing. Not a special version of Git. Of course, I had to both install Git and GCC, download them with upget uh, update. Anyone interested in something? Uh, might not install here. Try ping. Ping yes, ping. Please. <laughs> ping. I mean, yeah. ping what? Anything that relies on <laughs> Puppet C doesn't work. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So I, if IP doesn't work. See, if config doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think I could. Yeah, actually, Gaka now works as a ring on Windows. Yeah, yeah but then yeah, probably not through the. Bash well, it's, you can connect over the network to the demon. So it's. Uh, Sorry? Yeah, you can see the page. Oh, no, <laughs> Where is Docker? But of course, Docker isn't there. So. Uh, mm. Mm. Oh, where is Docker? Is some, it's, it's a different thing. It's like a menu bar for where docking is? your application. So it's, I so the package has oh, a different yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, something yeah. else I want to show you. Uh, the uh, elf. Uh, what's the command? Yeah. So as you can see, the, the, what I just compiled is an elf a standard binary for Linux. I'm sorry. So that's the uh, demo part. So you can show the processes. Yes. Yes. Ah, yeah. She does. Let me see. So, yeah, there's not much running now. 
I was intending yeah. to see the, 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 the Windows yeah. processes, but I'm wrong. Yes. Yeah. No, because you're running not. This is the only the, uh, the environment of, of Ubuntu where you're running inside. So, so you don't see anything of Windows. So, apart from a better integration, it's pretty much like running a virtual machine with a Windows 8. Um, More like Docker, actually. Yeah, yeah, because well, this yeah. you cannot replace yeah, power so shell if, it, if these kind of commands don't actually no, run on the no, actual no. window, yeah. right? Well, I, I don't know about Docker. Right. Yeah. Right. I, uh, I haven't tried Docker yet, so uh, maybe you can make no, it. No, no, I don't mean Docker, but like also DS. Right? If, well, you want to write scripts that do something with the system, and all the commands actually just act on the Ubuntu subsystem, then uh, that's you will not be writing scripts in. Uh, let's, let's keep this to the to the discussion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was my point. I, I would find it very useful if you could use Bash to script your Windows box. And now yeah, you know, that's not going to happen. Why? Let's, let's, let's keep the discussion to the end. Yes. So uh, some, something about my personal experience with Windows 10. Uh, I couldn't get the language thing fixed, so all the time I go to the browser, it still seems I'm in Holland. Well, I am, but still it tries to show me Dutch pages, etc., which I think is quite annoying. Uh, then there's this whole privacy discussion. When you install it, when you install uh, Windows 10, uh, you get all these questions like you want this, you want that. If you don't, if you don't go through those questions, then uh, it will, it will, well, give all your information. To Microsoft. That's the business model. They try to mimic uh, Google in some way, give away Windows for free. I don't know what it is, but uh, Cortana, everything they want to, they want to know all about you. And then even after I disabled everything, then it came up with this pop-up. Ah, now you're logged on and on Skype, which I didn't ask for. Also, so from that point perspective, I had, I thought it was quite a bad experience. Then let's take a look at the. Uh, uh, some other technologies Microsoft is using. I'm sorry for the this, this says .NET Core. So Microsoft uh, was only with Windows only. So they bought Xamarin and then they open sourced uh, Mono. And now they're going to rebuild Mono as uh, something which is sort of less big but still big enough to run most of the web applications. And then you can run those web applications both like they do with Raycom both on the Linux and on the Windows host. So that's that's going to be big. I, I know many people who want to work on that. How uh, about the uh, Vacom? Have you looked at the .NET Core yet? We're trying to migrate away from .NET as fast as possible. Completely from .NET. OK. I think we're interested in seeing the number of uh, Windows 12. But we haven't tried it. OK. So, but this this is something. Well, the way they will compete with with Java. So, actually, they sort of when they start .NET, they started with uh, .NET uh, competing with uh, Java, and I think this this will be big. But we'll, we'll discuss it later. And then Xamarin, they have Xamarin Studio, which is not only uh, uh, compiling code for Windows apps and for the Windows Phone, but you can also make a C sharp. You can make your application run on. Android and iOS. And now they have a public available, I don't know exactly how what you need, but at least they have some they have Xamarin Studio. And for most people now you can run C sharp code on your iOS device, on your Android device. And Microsoft in that way is trying to embrace and have people Develop Xamarin Studio and because for the two major platforms, and then sort of as a free benefit, they can get their code run on a Windows phone. At least that's my my guess. Well, then there's Docker. With Docker, there is a problem, and they acknowledge it. Because they have two interfaces with Docker, with the Docker implementation on Windows. One is the PowerShell implementation, and one is with the Docker command interface. And they don't work together. 
So you do either one or the other, but you can never manage from, from both at the same time. So, but maybe they will, they will change this strategy. I'm not sure. Then there's Visual Studio Code. Many people are really uh, pleased with it. It competes with Atom, it competes with Sublime. Uh, this is a part of Visual Studio, like not the full blown, but. Uh, yeah, and it, it's, it's a good, it's very good editor uh, with many add ons for parsing your code, etc. Is it free? Yeah, it's free. Yeah. And then uh, there's many more, but the last one I would like to mention is uh, SQL Server on Linux. So the, the, the major comp competition there, of course, uh, at least I guess, is uh, Postgres. Um, I don't know what their strategy will be, because of course you have to pay for it. So why you would pay 10,000 of euros and then run it on a Red Hat Linux box and pay Red Hat for, for the support? I don't, I don't see the business model. I do see some problems. And that's something which in the discussions I haven't uh, seen a lot, is that is when you uh, work with SQL Server, you need a uh, SQL Server agent or client to have the high availability options and other things. And those clients are not available on Linux, nor on macOS. So I don't know what, why they did this, but I think many people do <coughs> want high availability in this time and age. Okay, that's some of the things. There are probably tons of other things Microsoft is doing. Uh, I've seen where, I've seen uh, GitHub repositories where they first explain how to install something on uh, Linux, then on OS X, and then down at the bottom you see how to install it. This Microsoft tooling, how to install it on Windows. So yes, there is a change going on inside Microsoft. Maybe they'll migrate to Linux. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. Okay, time for some discussions. Yeah. Can you run why in the bash? I'm sorry? Can you run why in the bash? No, that's a difference. Yes, so why not use SigWin better than SigWin? I'm sorry? Why not use SigWin? What's the benefit of the new bash? I cannot tell. Yeah, SigWin is more of a port of all the GNU tools to Windows. Yeah, I think. it sounds so more like what it's but meant. No, this is a whole different, different environment running directly than the Yeah, but that's worse, actually. Than no, it's not. It's, it's, not it's, it's, it's much better. Full access to repos, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. It's still very beta, but... Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Repo access is good. So who will dump his MacBook and install Windows? No, I, not yet. <laughs> I, I actually will do the opposite. Dump my Windows machine for Linux. Aha! Because <laughs> that's, no, I'm very happy with Windows 8.1. Uh, to be honest. Uh, no, I run the SSH agent via uh, Git Bash. That's uh, running actually MSYS2, which is a fork of Sigwin, but then have their own kind of thing going on, uh, and it runs very well with no problems. Uh, the only thing my main grasp with Windows 10 is all that privacy issues, to be honest. I mean, yeah. of course, privacy is now nothing anymore. But you don't work in an enterprise. Yeah. Anyone working in an enterprise like Advanca, are you running Windows machines or are you running uh, Linux? For, or for developers, yes? Uh, no. No. Just. Well, it's actually Linux. Uh, so but the, whole, uh, the whole office environment probably is Windows? Yeah. We have our own sort of our own department basically that does the place part, which is uh, yeah our use X and that's about sixty people or so. And everyone's on OS X or Linux. Yeah. yeah. Do you think any one of those people will migrate back to Windows? I mean, they're no. totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so like, why would why would you think anybody would do that? Well, I know that Microsoft thinks some of the some people will do it because they invest in it. Why do you think? <laughs> well, I, I I don't have any clue, to be honest. Because I would say like okay, you know, you can say the hardware might be more expensive on on Mac, but then you can get just an old any day laptop and install Linux on it. And then Microsoft wants you to pay for their software, so you can install open source software on it, run more open source software on it. So 
to me it just seems like a lose-lose situation. So that's why I'm wondering why you think there is a reason for anybody to go back to Windows to pay for that to just run and go for the screen in the first place anyway. I agree with you. If you punch me, this is a perfect discussion to have all, all you folks, lovely folks, okay. grab some more beer. Yeah. Spring has had this challenge that they thought they could have enough beer. And I'm a software service. And I'm really hoping that we can beat them. Beat them. <laughs> so please finish all the beer. Talk about Windows and Bash and running free software on a not free system. All the other way around. Thank you. Big applause for Mark.